The Andromeda Galaxy is one of the most observed spots in the night sky. Astronomers have been looking at it and taking pictures of it for the last 134 years. It's one of the favorite targets of many amateurs around the world, and with so many eyes on this galaxy for the last 100 years, it's quite surprising that no one up until this point has noticed that there is a huge undiscovered nebula right next to it. So let me take you all back and start with the story about how I helped discover this nebula surrounding the Andromeda Galaxy. For the last couple months, I've been heavily inspired by this astrophotographer whose name is Marcel Dreschler and his friend Xavier Strautner. They are on Astrobin and they've been discovering a huge number of new planetary nebula and supernova remnants around the night sky. And I've just been super inspired to try and find something new on my own. So I've been collaborating with them back and forth, looking to hopefully discover something new, sharing some of my image data, when Marcel emailed me with the potential for a new project. And this new project started out as a cruddy black and white image from a sky survey showing what looked to be a faint ringed system and oxygen surrounding the Andromeda galaxy. And this was our first hint that there might be something there worth looking at. We needed to find out and learn more about what could be there. And that's where I come in along with another member of the team whose name is Yann Sainty in France. We both happen to have almost the exact same telescope set up and we both pointed our telescopes at the point of interest around the Andromeda galaxy and we just started taking images. But before I tell you more about these images, we need to talk a bit about how narrowband filters work and how gases create colors in the night sky. So the night sky is full of different types of gases and dusts that we as astrophotographers can choose to look at. And we can use special filters called narrowband filters to look at the light from specific gases only. The main ones astrophotographers will look at are hydrogen alpha, which is an emission from hydrogen, oxygen three, which is the emission of course from oxygen, and then sulfur two from sulfur gas. And when these gases in space are either heated up or pressurized by some method, then they start to glow these specific colors of light in these emission bands. And this is what us astrophotographers are looking at. Now, not all of these gases are born equal when it comes to our universe or our galaxy. The most prevalent gas out there is hydrogen. So the dominant form of gas that you're going to see in the universe as an emission is hydrogen alpha by far. The other two filters, oxygen three and sulfur two, are extremely faint and this is where the discovery of new nebula come in. So like I stated earlier, the hints that there was a possibility of something new came through in the oxygen three filter. Now this comes from the light of ionized oxygen and it puts off a light blue color. Now this blue tone is subject to light pollution and it's also incredibly faint in most parts of the night sky. For this reason, not a lot of astrophotographers collect lots of data or images in this filter making it hard to see what lies out there in space. But if you have the patience and are willing to put down a lot of exposure time, there are a lot of hidden things in oxygen and oftentimes completely undiscovered objects, which is the case for this nebula around Andromeda. You can see oxygen emissions prop up in a lot of different places in the sky. For example, in the Veil Nebula, it's quite bright, and in the Crescent Nebula as well. In these instances, these are formed from shock waves or two clouds of colliding dust that heat up the oxygen gas and cause it to ionize and glow this blue color specifically. And that suggests some information about the formation of this nebula. So after we had some hints of some kind of oxygen around the galaxy, both Yann and I pointed our telescopes at the spot and started collecting data. Initially, I collected about 15 hours worth and he collected about the same. And we used both of our images to verify the fact that there is something there and it's not being caused by errors in our optical systems or any kind of light pollution gradients. With both of us, we're able to verify that this is a real thing that's really around the galaxy, which is where the fun part starts. So in astrophotography, the more exposure time you have on an object, the clearer it shows up and we do this by a method called image integration or stacking. So essentially, you take a whole bunch of images over and over again of shorter exposures ranging from five to 10 minutes, and then you average them together in software to reduce the amount of noise in the final image. And this is what you have to do when you're chasing down faint nebulae. So Yan and I each collectively captured about 110 hours on our own to try and resolve some kind of details in this nebula because my initial or our initial images of this oxygen arc 
were very, very noisy because this arc is incredibly faint. So we had to go over 100 hours to start to resolve some real details in the object. But when it comes to discovering new nebula, you can't just image in the target filter and call it a day. There are some special treatments you're gonna have to do to your image that not a lot of people know about. So a lot of astrophotographers who image through these narrow filters expect to only be imaging the wavelength of interest. So they would expect only to be seeing oxygen through the oxygen filter, only HA through the HA filter, but in reality, this isn't the case. There is still light that shouldn't be there that makes it into your filter. And this is because when we use narrowband filters, they actually sit within the broad or visible spectrum, which objects in space also emit light in. Any kind of star, for example, can emit light in the wavelength of interest that doesn't originate from the gas we care about. So for example, oxygen-3 sits in blue. Oxygen-3 isn't the only blue thing in space. There's other blue things out there, and so they accidentally will make it into our filter. And that's gonna make it more difficult to see things that are new in just oxygen. And we really wanna improve our contrast to see the most details possible. So what we need to do is we need to clean the blue out of the oxygen filter in a process called continuum subtraction. And in software in PixInsight, we perform this by capturing a blue image and an oxygen image and we can use this blue image to clean out the stray blue light that made it into our oxygen image, allowing us to view the oxygen arc in much higher contrast and more detail. So now that we both had our 109 hours, we were able to both collectively see some finer details that exist within this oxygen arc around Andromeda, and it is crazy. Not only the oxygen arc, we also made the discovery of what appears to be a new oxygen nebula within Andromeda itself, a quite large oxygen nebula. It looks almost to be the size of a large chunk of the galaxy that hasn't been imaged before and it also is insane in its own right and definitely worth taking a look at with some longer focal lengths. So the telescope that I use to help confirm this discovery is my own remote observatory at Sierra Remote Observatories. I use my Takahashi FSQ-106 with a 0.73 reducer and my QHY-600 CMOS camera. With this combination at f3.6 and a short focal length of about 400 millimeters, I was able to get a wide field of view with very fast speeds, allowing me to get a great amount of detail on the nebula over the course of 100 or so hours. I used 10 minute long exposures, which are very, very long for my setup. Along with this, I did capture the blue images to do the continuum subtraction. So like I said earlier, when gases collide, they can heat up and create glowing emission in different narrowband wavelengths. For this nebula, it glows purely in oxygen. So thanks to the work of the two scientists working on this project, we have some ideas as far as what this arc could be, but honestly, we're not entirely sure yet. We had a really awesome leading theory that it was coming from the halo interaction between Andromeda and our galaxy, but that isn't so clear anymore. And there are also some hints that it's originating from the Andromeda stellar stream which is a large giant stream of stars getting ejected from Andromeda, which could have some sort of interaction with dust or gases outside of Andromeda. So those are the two leading theories that it's from the stellar stream or potentially from the halo interaction. The thing that will tell us more, or give us some more information about what is the source of the nebula is gonna be its radial velocity or its speed and direction of where it's going in the nighttime sky. If it's heading directly towards us, then obviously it's probably from the halo interaction of our galaxies, but if it's heading up and out of Andromeda, then it's more likely to be caused by the giant stellar stream. So this is an active area of study and we don't really know yet. It's been a topic that's been being studied for like the last four or five months that I've been sitting on this photo. So it's, <laughs> this is kind of what happens when you're dealing with new discoveries. You don't know exactly what's causing them. And this is just part of the scientific process, which is quite exciting, but also a little frustrating at times. The one truly terrifying thing about helping out with this discovery is the fear of someone else finding it first. This part of the sky really isn't secretive like a lot of other places would be. And more and more people are starting to view Andromeda with the oxygen filter. I actually saw a couple images posted while I was sitting on my own image that actually already showed the oxygen arc in them. 
they just didn't have enough exposure time to know that anything was there. So it, it has been a truly nerve wracking process, hoping that no one else notices it first, because in an area of the sky like this, it's really only a matter of time before someone notices something. And it's honestly kind of a miracle that no one has seen it up until this point. It is faint, but it's really not that faint. You can detect it within the course of maybe 10 to 15 hours. Thousands of people have observed this part of the sky. Uh, over the last couple hundred years and it's mind-boggling that someone hasn't noticed this until now So if you're out there as an astrophotographer and you're wanting to capture this nebula yourself Here would be my advice to you The first thing you're going to need is a wide field of view telescope probably around 300 to 900 millimeters focal length You're also going to need an oxygen 3 filter and ideally you want a pretty good one Three nanometers, of course, is better, but you should work with what you have. You will need this filter to detect the nebula whatsoever because it's very faint. The last thing you'll need, of course, is a blue filter, and you're going to use this to do the continuum subtraction to show contrast in the nebula. Now, this nebula is very faint. It's a lot fainter than you will expect. I needed 109 hours at F3 to be able to see any kind of structure at all, and even at 109 hours, it was not really enough to get everything and really crisp detail. You really need a lot of time and you really need every advantage you can get. So if you can go to dark skies to do it, I recommend going to dark skies. I recommend shooting on the new moon. Do longer exposures than you think and do much more of them than you expect to be able to do. I was able to show that its presence was there within about 10 hours, but there is a lot of fine detail in this arc or shock wave and you're going to want to go deep on it to really resolve it. I know this is going to be frustrating to a lot of people who just shot their Andromeda images with the hydrogen narrowband filter and think that they're done. Well, the game has changed now and you now have to do oxygen too. <laughs> and I feel very, very lucky that I get to be a part of this initial discovering process. I do have to say, I didn't do any of the discovering. I merely helped provide some of the confirmation and some of the equipment to help produce the first images, which is enough for me because this is a pretty historical image and I'm glad to be involved in it whatever way I can be. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm really looking forward to seeing some of your own images of this nebula one day because it's very beautiful. I'm just really thankful to be a part of this whole project. So thanks to Marcel, Yan, the professors, everyone else who's worked on this project for letting me be a part of it. It's been an absolute honor. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll catch you in the next one.